Dr. Gunderson, you have a report. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm pleased to share that Pascack Valley High School expects to reopen its doors tomorrow morning after being closed since January 5th. We are excited that we will be able to see our Pascack Valley students again and kick off the modified athletic season. Today, all staff participated in our annual Martin Luther King Jr. Professional Development Day. The theme of the day was connections, belonging, and relationships. Staff read responses to student writing prompts on the stated theme and participated in a variety of workshop activities. I have been engaged with fellow Bergen County superintendents in reaching out to Bergen County officials to organize educator vaccination sites throughout the county. Unfortunately, it seems as educators will have to wait a little bit longer to receive vaccinations, and I'm concerned that without a well-planned, well-thought-out distribution system for educators, the effort to vaccinate teachers, paraprofessionals, custodians, and secretaries will drag on longer than necessary. It is my belief that vaccinating educators will allow schools to be more readily attended to by our students and promote both educational as well as economic growth. Our work with scheduling for next year has started. As an administrative team, we look forward to sharing additional information on our effort to open up an additional coursework opportunity for students next year. In other words, we're hoping for students to be able to have an additional class period. More information will be forthcoming in the upcoming weeks as our administrative team interfaces with various board committees to make this hopefully a reality for our students. Please know that later in the meeting, I will be sharing the timeline for our upcoming Pascack Valley principal selection process, as well as sharing the 2021 board committee member lists. Thus concludes the superintendent's report for Monday, January 18th, 2021. Thanks. Very good, thank you. Uh, Aria, why don't you kick us off? Can you hear me? I can. Good evening, everyone. My name is Aria Shalile. I'll be presenting the Pascac Hill Student Report for the month of January. I'll begin with classroom items. To support Jack Silver, a junior at Pascac Hills who is currently battling leukemia and organizations recommended by hashtag Jack Strong, the Student Government Association is hosting a school-wide Pascac Hills Kahoot game on Thursday, January 21st at 5.30 p.m. To participate in the trivia game, the student government is asking for a minimum donation of $5. All of the proceeds will be donated to organizations recommended by hashtag Jack Strong, including the Jillian Fund, MDS Foundation, and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Trivia questions will test students' knowledge of Pascac Hills. For co-curricular items, in December, the Project Patterson Club collected 1,348 toys for their annual toy drive. Thank you to all those who donated to this amazing cause and brighten the holiday season for the students of the Community Charter School of Patterson. And congratulations to the Pasca Kills Model UN team for successfully participating in two virtual competitions over the past month. Jordana Brief, a sophomore at Hills, won an honorable mention at the Social Distancing Model UN competition. Hannah Baskin, Alana Mendard, and Riley Solomon collectively won four awards at the Virtual International Model UN competition. And the Pascac Pioneer Robotics team hosted their first every ever Family Code Day coding event this afternoon, which hosted 12 families. During this event, student pioneers encouraged children aged from grades one to six and parents to work together and solve coding challenges while learning the fundamental parts of computer science. For athletic items, the Pascac Hills girls and boys basketball teams, wrestling team, track, and other winter sports have begun practicing for the winter season. We wish all winter sports teams good luck over the next few months. And congratulations to Aaron Kirkby, Pascac Hill softball coach, for earning a spot in North Jersey's top 40 power players of 2020 in recognition of her leadership and for being a supportive figure for Pascac Hill softball players, especially over the past year. And then for my joke of the day, why did the farmer only wear one boot to town? Oh. <laughs> he heard there would be a 50% chance of snow. <laughs> Okay. No pressure, Connor, for the joke of the day or anything. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. Hello, everyone. I will be giving Pascac Valley student report for the month of January, and we will start with classroom items. The Spanish National Honor Society adopted a family during the holiday season. With the combined efforts of all 22 members, the students were able to donate over $500 in gifts to a family in Cliffside Park facing hardship due to the pandemic, making their holiday season a little bit brighter. 
The PV student publication has published nearly 20 stories in its What's in Its Name package, exploring the use of Native, Amer Native American mascots, interviewing people from all over the country and presenting a, a broader range of stories. The coverage team recently ran an article with the perspectives of teen journalists from the Navajo and Hopi nations in Arizona. The daily newspaper serving those reservations, the Navajo Hopi Observer, interviewed two of our journalists about their perspectives in putting together this series of articles. The What's in a Name package has been over a year in the making with more articles to come. On January 13th, the PV History Club hosted a guest speaker, Theodora Smiley Lacey, a civil rights activist and educator. Ms. Lacey was a personal friend of Rosa Parks and Dr. Martin Luther King helped organize the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955. And upon moving to Teaneck was an integral part with peacefully integrating the Teaneck public schools. The event hosted by PV senior Danny Finch was attended by over 222 people. The club is advocating for a day of service this MLK day and hopes that Ms. Lacey's life story inspired many to know that a single person can make a difference. Co-curricular items, Pathak Valley Junior Faith Machione will be holding a virtual event about honeybees on January 26th at 7 p.m. Faith hopes to spread awareness about her Girls Scout Gold Award project for saving the honeybees. Please join the virtual event on Zoom to learn more about the honeybee pr process, their importance, and why they are decreasing, and how we can help them. PV's troop of International Thespian Society inducted eight new members during the virtual induction ceremony on Monday, January 11th. In December, ITS held its annual fundraiser for Broadway Cares and Equity Fights AIDS, raising over $200 to donate to this worthy cause. In addition, PV Theater held auditions for this year's spring musical, Little Shop of Horrors. They will be recording and filming the show in March and April and look forward to streaming many performances for the PV community in May. The last co-curricular item, the PV Val the Pathak Valley Interact Club members held a very successful toy drive, donating four large bags of toys to the Center for Hope and Safety and Hackensack University Medical Center. The club is currently in the process of planning their next community service project. Now we move on to athletic items. Congratulations to Jennifer Maloka for being the 2020-2021 Pathak Valley recipient for the NJSIAA National Girls and Women in Sports Award. The NJSIAA recognizes the importance of promoting women in athletics and hosts an annual award ceremony to support this national movement. This is the 35th year of the ceremony and there's a way for, for providing well-deserved recognition to many of the finest athletes in the state. Pathak Valley recognizes Jennifer's outstanding leadership while participating on our swimming and girls lacrosse teams, as well as her success within the classroom. Congratulations to Desmond Von Topol for being named a 2020 New Jersey Mini Max winner sponsored by the Maxwell Football Club. Congratulations to Desmond on this remarkable achievement. And lastly, congratulations to Coach Jeff Jasper for being named the NorthJersey.com Top 40 Power Players of 2020. This is the ninth annual ranking recognized influential people within the athletic world in northern New Jersey. Congratulations, Coach Jeff Jasper, on this wonderful accomplishment. For the fun fact, be on the lookout for the upcoming virtual Val Valley Cup trick shot competition. Students and staff will be invited to participate in this year's version of the competition. The winning individuals will earn points for their grades. Be sure to get involved and show off your best trick shot. And for the joke of the day, why doesn't the sun go to college? Because it has a million degrees. Thus concludes my report to the Board of Education for January 2021. Moving on to presentations, uh, this evening we have math, the mascot committee presentation update, the, the procedural update, and we're going to be starting with um, Hills, uh, Alexa Sipos, and Jacob Levin. The mic is yours. Uh, thank you. Our mascot selection committee is made up of roughly 11 or 12 faculty members, as well as students from all walks of life at Pascac Hills student government, athletics, drama, and other various clubs and organizations. These individuals were selected to advocate for the groups they represent, in part to create a comfortable environment for all members of the committee and receive input from all facets of the school to create a better, more inclusive result. We are of the belief that the students selected are honored and excited to be able to be a part of this creative process 
and to make a change that will positively impact not only ourselves, but the school as a whole presently and in the years to come. I know I am. Uh, overall, as representatives of the student body, we're grateful for the opportunity to voice our ideas and inspirations in the hopes of a brighter future with a mascot we can all rally behind. So to start off the mascot decision-making process, Mr. Paspal has sent out a Google form survey to the rest of the committee. And this survey basically instructed each member to type in their first, second, and third mascot choice, along with a rationale explaining as to why each of those mascots could be suitable for our school. This survey also included a new logo design each member possibly had in mind. The committee was advised that their mascot proposal should of course represent toughness, courage, and grit, but are also inclusive to everyone so everyone feels safe at Hills. With this form, the team was allowed to present their ideas privately without the pressure of their peers maybe disagreeing with them in a group setting. We have received a number of results and to continue the hunt for our new mascot, a meeting will be held this Wednesday, January 20th, so that the team can analyze their results. During that meeting, the committee will all come together to decide the top three most popular mascot options from that survey, and then of course finalize for a school-wide vote. Overall, this process thus far has been easy and effective, and we are so excited to present three new mascot options for our school to choose from, and of course pick one we can all stand behind. It is such an amazing opportunity for the student body to even be allowed to take part and have a say in this selection. So on behalf of Hills and especially the mascot committee, we thank you. And we're just all really excited to unveil our new mascot. Very good, thank you. And for, let's see, Pascat Valley, we have Delia Collis and Vasily Karwelich. Uh, did I pronounce that correctly? Karlevich. Ah, thank you. Okay, you guys are up. Good evening, everyone. So far, our committee has had one meeting on January 7th. I will explain the procedures that we set up in that first meeting, and then Delia will discuss our goals moving forward. Our committee is made up of 68 members, and it is meant to be a sample of our school population. There's a combination of 15 coaches and teachers, who are spread out across all 12 departments. There are 53 students in our committee who represent every single sport and virtually every club that is offered at Pasquet Valley from ice hockey and football to bowling and golf. And if a sport like soccer has a girls and boys team, then one girl would represent the girls team and one boy would represent the boys team. In terms of clubs, we have representation from theater, robotics, DECA, Camp Raspberry, and more. The presidents and vice presidents of the executive and class councils were also invited to the committee as well. Students who were invited to the committee were nominated by a coach or advisor, and many students were very honored to be part of the committee. And that shows in our attendance with 64 out of the 68 members attending the first meeting. And those who didn't attend sent emails to Mr. Buchanan to meet privately and discuss the meeting at a later date. Just like Hills, we will be nominating three mas three mascots to be voted on by the student body and faculty. The committee also agreed that the new mascot shouldn't represent a group of people and it should be A, positive and inclusive in nature, B, promote school pride and excitement, and C, portray strength, toughness, competitiveness, grit, togetherness, excellence, history, fairness, and compassion. We would also like to make clear that our school colors are not changing and that also we were just nominating the mascot name and the logo will be a completely separate process that will take place after we, the student body and faculty has voted on a mascot name. Additionally, everyone on the committee has an equal poll and the same voice. We understand that we were all selected for a reason and that we should focus on picking a mascot that best represents our teams and clubs. With that said, I'm now going to hand it off to Delia to discuss our second meeting and our goals moving forward. Hi, thanks Vasily. Um, our next meeting will take place on January 21st. And as Vasily said, we'll be going into the meeting with the list of possible mascots. This meeting, if we're not all virtual, will take place in the auditorium on Thursday at 3.30. Students who are virtual um, will not be left out and a Zoom link will be provided so that they can share and join in our discussion. Um, 
these past few days, members of the committee have been holding discussions with the group, the groups that they represent, and will nominate up to three mascot suggestions by the next week, by the next meeting on Thursday. Ideally, in the second meeting, we will come up with the top three mascots for a school-wide vote. However, more time may be needed to narrow down the options, so a third meeting may be scheduled um, to discuss to continue discussions. We would like to generate descriptions for each mascots to for each mascot we vote for so students can understand our rationale in selecting each logo as well as the pros and cons. During our meeting, we, we emphasize to each members to each member that privacy will be respected and needs to be respected in order to create a safe and comfortable environment for members to share their views. Since we understand that this is such a sensitive topic, members are also reminded to be advocates for the groups that they represent. By creating a sample for each sports and clubs team in the school um, with representatives of both students and teachers, we hope that our mascot will be something students can really get behind for decades to come. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask them now. Okay, moving on to old business. Tammy, I have a couple of things. Okay. Um, first, I just wanted to uh, compliment the administration. Uh, one of the things I was gonna bring up, and I think it's old, not new, was are we getting ahead of year-end celebrations? Uh, <laughs> and I have to tell you, you know, last year we didn't know anything until March 13th, and it was a scramble. This year we do have some thing, we realize things can change but I was very happy, and I don't know how much you can share publicly, Eric, but I was very happy to see that the administration has a plan uh, for traditional senior year-end activities. I know it's already starting to creep up a little bit on social media, and uh, Kristen and I saw that, and I, I didn't want to say too much, but I wanted to say they're on it, you know, so <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yes, last year it was, a, I think a challenge would be an understatement. Right. Um, and it's amazing though, how after the December holidays, how quickly your mindset shifts from just getting the school year up and running to, oh no, we need to get ready for the end of the school year now in January. Yep. Um, so I have to give a lot of credit to our building administrators who are really on top of this, working closely with the PFA and PFO. Uh, things are in progress and um, we're cautiously optimistic that we will be able to have somewhat of modified yet normal year-end activity. So Great. thank you. So the other item is a little more, um, well, it's educational. Uh, back a few months ago, David Steinberg, former board member, brought up our um, trending AP exams in science and how they were trending in the wrong direction as opposed to some of the other APs that were holding their own. When you look at the Department of Ed 2019 test results, um, we're not looking very good at all. Um, it's for Pascag Valley, only 39% are coming in as uh, proficient. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, and at Hills, it's even worse. It's 38%. Now, before I ask my question or make my point, I realize, and some of the new members may or may not know this, that in 2019, some of these tests were optional and there was a big movement. I don't wanna take it. I'm not gonna give it much thought. And I, I do agree that that may have made those numbers lower. However, when you look at our peer schools and in our geographic area, and you look at Old Japan, uh, Northern Valley in general, and you look at Westwood and Park Ridge, they're in the fit high 50s and the 60s and we're, we're under 40. So my, now my question or my point is, understanding there are factors are we looking at this specifically and is there an action plan to address this because that's two indicators in this in this uh subject matter that are not going and i, I do have to i'm not going to name her name a resident brought this to my attention and she was spot on um so it wasn't me like looking for trouble somebody brought it to me and i thought she was right so i wanted to bring it up yeah thank you i if uh, if you refer to the october 26th uh, Board of Education meeting, Dr. Backenheimer presented on our standardized test scores at that time. And he demonstrated that our AP scores are getting better and better year over year. 
as well as our SAT scores. Now, last year, there was no state testing as a result of what took place um, with uh, the quarantine at that time. And you're absolutely right, Mr. Blundo. Those, that science test that was administered was a test that did not count for anything, and our students knew that. And several years ago, the prior president of the Board of Education made it very clear that this board found that standardized test, that standardized test to be a waste of time for our students, and students should instead be preparing for their SATs and AP score uh, tests as well. In addition to that, for some period of time, this Board of Education is focused on the importance of educational experiences that don't necessarily get measured in standardized test scores. Admittedly, standardized test scores are important, but they're not the end all and be all to the educational experience. I have had conversations with Dr. Backenheimer as recently as last week about a variety of different standardized test scores, including, because I do know that there's some chatter on social media about that, um, I think, environmental science um, um, assessment. Um, we, he is looking into it. He is in conversation with the science supervisor, but I would like to find out, maybe not this evening, but in future conversations with this board, particularly those board members that are going to be on the curriculum committee, to reevaluate this board and see how critical it is to this board that our students are prepared for standardized tests versus the focus that we've been having, which is what we believe are really good educational experiences to help students get prepared for 21st century careers and educational opportunities. Uh, I, I feel strongly, uh, I'm an alum, by my training, I'm a physicist and engineer, as you are, Eric, you're a physicist. Um, I'm aware of this, uh, what Mr. Blondo is speaking of. I, my general philosophy is we as board members, many of us are parents, either are students currently in the district or previously in the district. And I truly believe that we're, it's a partnership of the students, the parents, uh, the whole faculty and administration, as well as we, the board members. I truly believe it's a four-way partnership. So I don't want to point fingers. That's not right. Because I think we all share in some responsibility. But I, I think we need to get these numbers up because uh, many uh, people who study various disciplines are considered smart people. And certainly those kids who focus on science are included within those. So I, I feel strongly that our numbers should come up because why would we have taken it any different than any other district? That's that's the one point where I, I'm going to say that I, I don't agree with is that I agree that it was, not uh, I'm sure we didn't take it overly uh, critical, but I'm sure other districts might have felt the same way. And, and, I, and because the numbers are so different, when you look at the 30s and you look at the 50s and the 60s, it's substantial. And, and yeah, I don't want to witch hunt, I just want to help make it better, whatever it is we can do to make it better. But I think we're better than that uh, as a team. Uh, I think we should try to figure out what we can do to help. Uh, and, and maybe the best thing to do, frankly, is just ask the department, how can we help you? Like the Jerry Maguire, I know it sounds silly, but help me help you. Tell us, what, how can we empower them better if there's something that they don't have, that they need, or they're not getting from the students, maybe. I don't, again, we're not pointing fingers here, that we need to facilitate that and do everything we can. It's important, you know, we, hear, we hear STEM and all these things all the time, and it's very important, but then I think we need to, I think we need, I think we need to focus on it because I think, for well, Mr. Blondo, it's the second time we're hearing about this, and you know how I was because I was the one who kind of bubbled it up uh, with the standardized tests and then with the AP scores. And I'm an alum here myself, as are my kids, so I feel very strongly about getting that correct. Sure. The the so other thing, if I could just mention too, is I'd like to know if our curriculum's equivalent with the other districts. Meaning, are we teaching apples to apples, and does that affect the end result of the test scores? So the curriculum that we teach, as opposed to the other districts, would be interesting as well. So I will make sure that Dr. Backenheimer addresses this with the curriculum committee, so you can have some time to really look into the data. We can reevaluate and, I'm sorry, revisit um, that test particularly, and talk about how there was the opt-out um, practice that was widely taken advantage of in this district. But more importantly, 
We'll take a hard look at the curriculum, talk about how we are up to date on our curricular efforts, and we'll look at other measures of assessment as well, whether it's SAT2s, whether it's AP scores, what have you. We'll, we'll make sure that the board feels comfortable with where we are, and if we find out that we are not up to the levels that we would like to be, that we have a plan in place to get better. You know, I appreciate your comments, Mike, and everybody, you know, your comments, Tammy. Um, I would never advocate teaching to the test, but 38% when somebody comes in and says, what's this high school I'm going to move into this community about? And it's not about property values, but, you know, I want to look at this school and I want, and wow, their science, and to, to Mike's point, is so much lower than all the others. I would... That said, I'll repeat, I don't think we need to teach to the test, but I think we have to evaluate it and see exactly as Mike said, what can we do in a balance? Um, I, I would just like to say as being on the curriculum committee, I spent a lot of time looking at the uh, results. I actually downloaded the whole spreadsheet of all the test results uh, for that year. And uh, you know, we're going to look into it definitely and uh you know uh one of the things that catches my mind on this is that both schools scored lower than other surrounding districts usually you see one you say okay one is one way and the other is lower and there's a difference and you can assume okay maybe it's uh has to do with the school but it seems to me to lean towards more of a curriculum thing. And that's where, you know, I think the curriculum committee has to uh, really, you know, um, look at it and and see what uh, what can be done. You know, now I know there, uh, there are things in the works. So um, I'm encouraged by that. And uh, we are going to be moving forward with it. And I expect that things will be dealt with properly. So. Okay, very good. You know, if I could add something, maybe we could have a representative from the department come talk to us and, and share their challenges and, and their vision and, and, and moving forward at, at the appropriate time. Yeah, I think at the appropriate time, that makes sense. I think the first uh, step is to, to have this discussion with the curriculum committee. Yeah, which is I'm surprised. Not, so yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. And then it's together as a committee, if you feel that the entire board should hear a presentation or be involved in a, in a conversation, we can go ahead and do that. And the community should know we'll have a unified front. We agree on how we're going to address it. Yeah, of course. Um, just to kind of change the <laughs> old topic here, but I did uh, have two people reach out to me regarding the news brief, and they were highly excited about the internship highlight. So I wanted to uh, just say that that has not gone unnoticed by the community and it is getting out there and people were very happy to see that. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. That was one of the efforts of the communications committee, I think, right? To uh, And the post-secondary uh, education committee as well to get that message out there about the positive experiences that our students are having out there. So thank you for bringing up and for sharing those sentiments. Was there some, yes, old business. Was there going to be some continued discussion about the mascot that Mike, you wanted to have? I wanted to create some space to chat about that. That would be great. So, you know, the, the topic of the mascot, we, we certainly as candidates, as, as uh, school board members, were asked that question uh, often in the lead up to the election. And I, I think it's safe to say, though, I don't want to speak for anyone else who ran that, um, we did not run for the purpose of being able to have input on the school mascots. I, I know and speaking for myself, I have four children who will be going through the system over the next 12 years. And, uh, you know, assuming this responsibility is much more than about mascots, though the process is important. Um, and while I have not had the opportunity to offer perspective as a board member, now that we are moving through the process, um, I do feel that that's necessary so that the community understands where I stand uh, going forward. So as we look to move forward, uh, I would like to take a moment to reflect on how we've gotten to this point of discussing new mascots. 
On June 22nd, 2020, the Pascac Valley Regional Board of Education voted unanimously to retire the Valley and Hills mascots. That there would be action taken on this topic was not communicated to the public, and that it would even be discussed was not widely known, with the agenda for that meeting noting there would be conversation about mascots on page 26 of a 26-page agenda. Since 95% of the conversation that night was focused on the Indian mascot, the board member making the motion was asked to clarify before the vote if this included the cowboy and responded, yeah, because the cowboy itself is also non-inclusive. When I reached out to the board, I asked on what climate surveys or research was that conclusion based? It did not receive a response. There were references made to climate surveys and that decision making was based in part on these surveys. It would have been helpful for the public to see the results of these surveys to better understand the board's decision making process in labeling cowboys as non-inclusive. Following the board vote, since I did not get an answer to that question, I found myself asking the question, what is a cowboy? Over the last few months, I've learned about cowboys of the cold, Mongolian eagle hunters, who were coincidentally right after the vote featured on a segment by 60 Minutes, the oldest and most watched news magazine on television. Lori Cotter Bryceland, Pascack Hills class of 87, and founder and executive director of Victory Hill Therapeutic Horsemanship, where they teach all abilities, genders, races, et cetera, life skills through horsemanship. And New York City's Federation of Black Cowboys, dedicated to keeping alive the memory and tradition of African-American cowboys from the Old West, where during the 1870s and 1880s, African-American cowboys made up approximately 25% of the 35,000 cowboys in the Western frontier. The Federation, according to their mission, honors this legacy through youth programs, rodeos, and school visits, while also using horsemanship to teach local youth life skills such as patience, kindness, and tolerance. Just a few examples of many of who and what cowboy, cowboys are and can be. Before a snap vote to remove, Maybe we should have asked our community the question, what is a cowboy and what does being a cowboy mean to you? For an example from the world of education, I offer the University of Wyoming. The world needs more cowboys marketing campaign. A cowboy isn't what you are, but who you are. Drawing upon Wyoming's proud heritage, this campaign redefines what it means to be a cowboy in this day and age, distilling it down to the inner spirit of curiosity and boldness that all who call themselves cowboys and cowgirls can identify with, no matter their race or gender, or whether they're students, employees, alumni, or other supporters, UW President Lori Nichols says. The cowboy spirit is what the University of Wyoming helps instill in its students, giving them the skills and support they need to make the breakthroughs that benefit our state and the world. I believe the Board of Education has failed our community by focusing only on what they think a cowboy and cowgirl is not, and not encouraging and allowing for conversation about what it is and can be. And it's never too late to have that conversation in a constructive way. As the committees move forward with their process, I welcome them to use the above as an example of how important it is to identify what we value and believe in selecting a mascot, in selecting a mascot which it sounds like they have been doing because that ultimately is what is in a name. Thank you. Uh, moving on to new business, Dr. Gunderson, um, can you talk about the principal search timeline? Yes, absolutely. 
So it is about that time of year that we are going to launch our principal search for Pascack Valley High School. This year will be a little bit different. As you recall, last year we were searching for two principals and we had a joint effort between the two buildings. It was a district-wide initiative to, uh, to find two principals. This year we are looking for one principal for Pascack Valley and uh, the board has, been, has received a rather comprehensive overview of what that process is going to look like. So for the public's knowledge, we are going to be advertising this weekend um, in, on NJ.com, which is how we're going to get the word out. We are also going to be spreading the word via social media to various networks, professional organizations in the county and the state and regionally. There's going to be a February 12th deadline for submissions for the position. Come March 1st, we will have first round interviews. That first round committee will consist of some staff members, parents, students, a couple of Board of Education members as well. March 15th, we will have second round interviews with a more narrow selection of candidates based on the feedback from the first round interviewing committee. That committee will be primarily comprised of administrators and supervisors and also a board member. By April 5th, we expect to have the final two candidates in place. Um, and I will be able to then uh, recommend a candidate to the Board of Education. And by the middle of April, we hope to have Board of Education approval for a new principal, which will give that candidate, if it's an outside candidate, enough time to give notice in their current district. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to go ahead and begin the transition process.